Hello and welcome back to the Shack with me, 2E0XSB. Today we're going to be looking at a Nano VNA, which is a small vector network analyzer which I use personally as an antenna analyzer. So stick around and let's have a look. So during my DX Commander build trilogy I was asked a few times what the actual little antenna analyzer was that I was using with the display screen and all the rest and I thought why don't I make a video explaining a little bit more about that. So it's a little Chinese made invention um, which comes in at a very cheap price of I personally paid I think it was £37 which should equate to about $45 ish given the exchange rate and for the price what a little piece of equipment it is absolutely stunning as far as I'm concerned especially for like I said the, the actual price tag of £37 okay just to point out this is more of a review video than a how-to if you would like me to go more in depth with how to use the Nano VNA, please put some comments in the comment section below and I'll sort that out. So here we have my Nano VNA. Straight out of the box it came with two little flying leads, one's connected to my antenna just up there. And we have an open, a short and a dummy load which are used for calibrating of the unit. To calibrate the unit it's actually very easy, just switch it on and if I use the end of this pen here which is for use on touch screens all we basically do is go down to Cal, Calibrate and Put the connectors on the end and test them for the open, short and load. This has already been done. I'm not going to waste too much time showing you through that process. So all we do is just click back on there. And this unit is fully calibrated. So the Nano VNA. It's a very small little unit. It's got a very small touch screen, which I do recommend having some sort of a stylus to actually use when you're navigating around that. It can be done via the little switch up at the top, which if you see, just click on there, and we can go up and down the menu there, do what we need to. Let's go on to back on that, and to actually press that, it takes you back. So as you can see, that's the top of the root menu. I'm going to click onto stimulus, and here we can set the start and stop for the range that we want to actually test. So if I just click on here onto the stop part, we we'll set at 30 megahertz at the moment. I'm going to put that down a bit. So just click on the corner of the screen there, brings up this keypad. I'm going to put that down to 20. 20 meg. So that's now changed the display and if we just look at that again quickly we can change the start, the stop, the center, all those different little options in there but for the aerial that I want to show you very quickly <clears throat> I've just set that between 50 kilohertz and 20 megahertz. Okay so the antenna that I'm actually connected to at the moment is the very first fan dipole that I ever made. And <clears throat> if we look on here, some of the SWR readings aren't exactly perfect. But it's still good for 40, that's the top of it there, going down to there, so 1.7. 1.9 so it's, it's pretty good for 40 but the shocking part is the 80 meters which if you see even at its lowest at 4 it's still 2.2 SWR 
So that's a known antenna that I've connected to that I know that I have problems with. It's something I'll be fixing in the future. But this is just to show you the versatility of the actual graph. The problem I do have with it is to get any sort of decent readings, you've got to really go in and start looking into the bands themselves. So we can actually connect the Nano VNA via a USB-C type connector which plugs in at the top there and we can connect that directly to a laptop or PC which means we can use some of the software that was designed for the actual Nano VNA to interrogate those readings that little bit closer. Okay, so if we open up the Nano VNA software there, taking a moment, and as you'll see, it's a very small screen, it doesn't have the ability to actually go up any further, uh, but all we do now is check on for COM port 5, just refresh that, and connect it. Now at the moment it's completely blank, but if we click on the Get Data, that now shows us that we're connected to the VNA itself. I'm going to change the chart format and if you look down here you've got all your different options there so you can do what you wish as such. But all I'm bothered about is the SWR at the moment so I'm going to click on there and as you can see that's a representation of what I was showing you on the screen of the VNA itself. Okay, so it's as simple as just connecting to the right COM port, collecting the data, and you will get your SWR graph down here. Some things of note are the fact that you can actually change the start and stop point in megahertz of your actual VNA. So, irrespective of what you set your micro uh, nano VNA to, sorry. Um, you can still change that, click on get data and it will change to reflect what you've just selected over in here. So it's completely autonomous. The other part is that when you hold your actual cursor over the line itself, it will give you the re readings for that exact part of the frequency with the SWR reading. So what we're looking at here is the known dodgy 80 meter element. So we can look here and see that literally it is so far out of whack that it's never going to work unless you've got one hell of a powerful ATU and <laughs> the likelihood of it matching up is going to be something else, but possibly it would. But as you can see at the bottom here, the lowest we're going to is 2.27, 2.8. Uh, 2.3 sorry really and we're getting to the 40 meter point here and it's not really the best for 40 either but still less than 2 SWR for the range of 40 meters and like I said we can then zoom in a little more so if we take it down to about 6 click get data that is the reflection of our 80 meter band. The software that I'm using is from the official Nano VNA website. There are other third party software out there, but for the sake of this video, I'm just using the official Nano VNA version 1.03. The main reason I don't want to be showing people to other sites is I don't want to be responsible for people downloading viruses, malware, that sort of a thing. Um, basically, I just want to keep you safe as much as myself and just point you to the sources that I know that are decent at the moment. So, if we have a little bit of a closer look at the Nano VNA itself, the actual package... As you can see there, there's very little stopping any sort of debris and such getting stuck inside there. 
I've left the screen protector on mine at the moment just for the sake of not scratching it up um, yeah the major flaw with the whole thing really I would say is the fact that it's just so open to the elements down here if you put this in a backpack ready for portable there's nothing to say that you're going to get all sorts of guff and gubbins getting stuck in there and possibly ruining your VNA kit on the other hand there's nothing stopping you from getting a little case made up for this I haven't researched it online myself personally but no doubt there's someone out there who's actually designed a little rubber case for this somewhere um, something I'm going to have to look at myself but yeah as you can see you've just got the lithium battery there stuck at the bottom um, your switches are a little bit exposed but on the whole it's an extraordinary piece of kit as you can see the size of it is absolutely minute and it is a VNA at the end of the day there's not many MFJ units out there that are antenna analyzers only that are that size they're a hell of a lot more bigger bulky sort of units so for portable use that would be ideal if we could just get some sort of a protective cover on that so here we have it the Nano VNA and for the price tag like I say of £37, $45 ish it's a very small little unit not much to look at but when you actually turn it on and have a look it's perfect for actually measuring those SWRs and impedances on your lines now personally I don't use mine for what about 99% of what it can actually do all I'm interested in is the SWR for matching up antennas making sure that I'm not putting any silly sort of SWR through into my radio shack okay so my conclusion on the Nano VNA personally I think it's an absolutely brilliant piece of kit especially for that price tag you're not going to get much out there on the market that can do what it can for that price I borrow MFJ antenna analyzers from the club which I belong to which is the Kings Lynn Amateur Radio Club which I'm a proud member of and one of the great things about being in that club is you can borrow the kit that they have in stock there and having this little piece of equipment myself has meant that I don't have to keep borrowing their MFJ big clunky machine and it's just as accurate so personally I would recommend this for anyone just make sure that you're going to buy it from somewhere that is reputable, somewhere that you know you're going to get your money back if anything does go wrong. I've seen a few stories online on different forums that are saying that one in three works, some are saying that one in every ten is dodgy, but personally I've only ordered one and it's worked perfectly. So... To review it and give it marks out of 10, personally I would give it a good 8. The major problem with it is it's just got no protection around the side. So if you did take that portable at any point, there's just so much that could go wrong. Especially if you've got in that in your backpack and you're out and about, trolling through hills, dales, all the rest of that. There's so much that could go wrong with it. So that is the only real bugbear that I have about the whole thing of the Nano VNA. Personally I think it's an absolutely stunning little piece of kit and it works exactly as it should do. It tells you the SWR in a good you know good precise way. Um, I would recommend that you do actually get the PC software and such um, because that is going to give you a lot more detail on your actual SWR if you you know if you are more interested in the um, minutiae of the actual readings and such but other than that I really can't fault it so until the next video it's good night from me 2E0XSB